So to get into the electronics club, you have to be inducted. That was so bad. That shouldn't go through. All right, welcome to the basics of inductors with Beauty and the Bolts. Before we get started, don't forget to click that subscribe button and click the like button and the little bell so that you do all the things that YouTubers want you to do. Yay! Inductors are a little bit more rare in hobby electronics than things like resistors and capacitors, but they're really important to know if you're doing anything in AC or alternating current. And that's partially because inductors are like the resistors of the AC world. They oppose changes in current and as a result are great for things like filtering signal or even transforming between different AC voltages. So an inductor is about as simple physically as any electronic component can get. It is literally just a coil of wire around a magnetic or non-magnetic former. It turns out, however, that just a coil of wire can do some really interesting things due to the magnetic properties of the coil. Because of Faraday's laws of induction, when an electric current is passed through this coil of wire, a magnetic field is created. This magnetic field can actually store the electric current for a short period of time, even if the supply is cut off. Just like capacitors can store charge, inductors can store a magnetic field which can provide current. Once the magnetic field around the coil collapses, the electric current also falls off. All right, so you can think of inductors like a large heavy water wheel, if we wanna take this back to the classic circuits and water analogy. So if you have a stationary heavy water wheel and you start flowing water through it, it will take some time and energy to get that wheel up and spinning. But then once it is spinning, if you somehow manage to stop the water or just cut off its supply, it will take time because of the momentum of the wheel for it to then stop. And so inductors are the same thing, but with electric charge. So this resistance to flow is called inductance, and it's defined as the ratio between magnetic flux and the current used to induce it. So this is measured in the SI unit Henry's, named after Joseph Henry, from the late 1700s to mid 1800s. Inductance of an inductor, there's a tongue twister, is controlled by four main factors. You have the number of turns of the coil, so how many times is the wire wrapped around. You have the material that the coil is wrapped around, so whether it's magnetic or non-magnetic, etc. You have the cross-sectional area of the coil, and you have the length of the coil. And those will all change its electromagnetic properties. And it wouldn't be a circuits video if we didn't tell you how to combine these things. So just like putting resistors and capacitors in series and in parallel, you are gonna wanna do the same things with inductors. So let's take a look at those equations. So as a general rule of thumb, inductors add in series and parallel just like resistors. So for series, the equation is the same as resistors and parallel, the equation is the same as resistors. But here's why. Inductors in series add together just like resistors. It's L1 plus L2 equals L total. And that makes sense because it's the same current going through all of the inductors. So if there's a change in current, the change in all of the inductors is the same. When inductors are connected in parallel, the total inductance is gonna be less than each individual inductor. And that's because each inductor is seeing less than the total amount of current going through the circuit because the current is getting split up as they are in parallel, which means that the ratio, the magnetic flux to electric current is different. And so when inductors are added together, it's one over L1 plus one over L2 plus one over L3 equals one over L total. Hopefully that was a helpful introduction to inductors. I feel like it was a massive tongue twister trying to make it through this whole video because inductors, inductance, inducting is really difficult to say, but I made it. And for that, you should give us a like or a subscribe wherever they are down here somewhere if you haven't already. And also check out our merchandise store which is down on our website linked below in the description so you can be the most fashionable Beauty and the Bolt fan on the planet. Um, also, down there is links to our social media, and we post really fun things sometimes, when we remember to, on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, and those are all linked down in the description below. So be sure to give us a follow, and until next time, it's Zyla and Andrew behind the camera, signing off from Beauty and the Bolt.